We're going to take a look at a couple of useful functions that are included with Abbey Fine Reader 14. I have a scanned PDF document here, a copy of a patent that I'm going to use as a reference document in an upcoming translation. Let's go ahead and open up the file and have a look at it. Okay, I can tell from looking at the screen that uh, it's a scanned document. Okay, and when I click on it, all of the page is selected. That is also another indicator that I'm dealing with a scanned document. So I'm not able to select any of this text. There is no text, really. It's all just a scanned image. So the first thing I would like to do, since this is only a reference document, and maybe I'm only interested in the abstract. The abstract is available here uh, with an English translation. This is a German patent here uh, with the number 57 in parentheses. You see the abstract in English and then underneath it, uh, the German abstract. So I'm going to use a little program called the Abbey Screenshot Reader. It's included with Abbey Fine Reader 14. And when I select that program, I'll tell it to capture an area. Okay, I'm going to click on the button on the right to capture a screenshot. And then I'm going to move my cursor up and select the part of the scanned document that has the English abstract that I'm interested in. And after I've selected that, underneath the red box, where the selection is, there's a little word that appears capture. And when I move the cursor over that, the pointer changes, and I will click on that. And then it just runs up CR, and it copies the text to the clipboard. Let's have a look at that. I'm going to launch Notepad and simply paste in the text. There it is. OK, and I'll go ahead and save that file. Give it a name. OK. Now, actually, what I just did in Notepad is a mistake, because when you save a text file in Notepad, when you have the word wrap turned on under formatting, what it does is insert a bunch of line breaks. So really, what I want to do is save it in this form, okay, with no line breaks. I have problems with that occasionally. And the other thing I want to do when I save text files, I usually try to save them in UTF-8 format. Now, in Notepad, when you go to save, at the bottom of the save dialog, there is a little drop-down box by the word encoding. And here you can choose different types of text. I tend not to choose ANSI because it doesn't support a lot of the special characters that you might find in German or Portuguese, for example. So I choose one of the Unicode versions, typically UTF-8, because that's compatible with the other software that I use. So now I'm going to go ahead and save that document this way. OK, and we'll close it. And now I will launch the Abbey Screenshot Reader again. Click the button to capture. Select the area that contains the German abstract. Click the Capture button. And paste it into a text file. and save it. Once again, saving it as a UTF-8 text file. OK, now what we just did did not require launching the usual full OCR program with all of its additional functions and slowing ourselves down. So this is a quick, easy way to convert small bits of text that one might find in a graphic somewhere. 
Okay, now the second useful function that one might find with uh, Abby Fine Reader 14 and also with earlier versions, and also for that matter with other OCR programs, is available from the context menu. So we're going to right click on the icon for that PDF document. And here in my context menu, I have a function that says convert with Abby Fine Reader 14, and I want to convert to a searchable PDF document. And what that will do is take my scanned PDF and make it a text on image PDF, PDF A format, I believe, and make that available for searching without changing any of the formatting. A lot of people will convert reference documents like this to a Microsoft Word file, but very often that messes up the formatting and reduces the reference value. So we want to leave all of that intact. Okay, so I'm going to tell it to convert this to a searchable PDF document. Okay, and I'm going to change the name here. I have the word searchable so I can distinguish it from the original document. In this Save As dialog, I can specify the OCR language. In this case, it's German. It usually comes up with German as the default because most of the OCR work I do is from German. But in case I'm scanning an English or a Portuguese document, I will change the OCR language here. And then we'll click Save. Okay, it'll take a couple of minutes to do the conversion. We'll just sit here and watch the dialogue and see how long this thing takes. It's converting 29 scanned pages. So that is quite a lot of text. Okay, sometimes on a page it might encounter a lot of words or formatting where it questions whether the language setting is correct. In this case, I think everything is correct. So I'm just going to leave things as they are for now. Okay, but I could be making a note to myself to have a look at page 14 or page 26, which are indicated here in the warning message. The other nice thing about this function for converting scanned documents to searchable PDFs is if you have multiple document pages on a single scanned page, this function is usually very effective at breaking up that image with multiple pages on it and uh, okay our processing is finished here and making separate pages in the searchable OCR document that is very helpful it also will rotate the pages if that's necessary so that they have a proper reading orientation in the searchable document that you create okay and it opens up the document in Abby Fine Reader 14. Okay, I'm really not interested in looking at it in this environment, but if you wanted to do something with it here, you could. We'll go ahead and close that. And here in my working folder, I see a copy of the new searchable PDF document that we created. Now let's go ahead and open that up briefly. All right, well, it looks pretty much like the other PDF document did, but let's see how well it does for searches. So we'll go ahead and look for a word. I'll look for the German word for claim. Okay, and it's sort of a fuzzy search here. All right, here I see a selection. Okay, we're going to Continue to search using Control G to find the next. Okay, and it's finding that text embedded in any of the uh, words that it may run across. Okay, so that looks pretty good. We'll do another search here for the German word for phenol resin. That's phenol hearts. Okay, I see it here on the page, so I know I'm going to be able to find that. All right, and you see here, the first instance is selected, and then the next instance that is seen on the page is also selected. 
So we'll go ahead and scroll through the document and see all of the various occurrences of that particular word. Okay, so now what I've done is I've taken a dead image PDF and converted it into a searchable document which retains all of the formatting, okay, all of the graphics and everything else that I might want to look at for reference. And this is a much better approach than converting to a Microsoft Word document or some other format if your intention is to use this for a reference document. But if you say, but wait a minute, wait a minute, I want to, uh, I want to translate some part of this. So maybe, maybe I want this text here, for example, this abstract text that I converted before with a screenshot reader. Maybe I want to take that and do something with it somewhere else. Well, now this scanned image is a searchable image. There is live or selectable text behind that image. As you can see, I've been able to select the text here. And I can also copy that text, for example, here using the function from the context menu. And I can launch a text program and simply paste that text into the document. So you can still take out parts of the text that you might want to cite in a document. Uh, if you're, for example, an attorney and need to do some citations uh, from the original text in the scanned PDF, if you convert it to a searchable PDF, you can select whatever parts of that text that you want to use for other purposes, copy them, and then paste them into a text editor of your choice or paste it into a message messaging application or something like that. Um, these are all useful functions which are included with the Abbey Fine Reader 14 license. You don't pay anything extra. You don't have to install any additional software. They're just there, available for you. And for many of the uses that you might have for OCR, maybe one of these functions can perform that conversion a little bit more efficiently without having to launch the uh, very resource heavy Abbey Fine Reader application every time.